Children in the modern world are really toxic, and it's no surprise when you look at the statistics of children on the autism spectrum, the numbers are skyrocketing in the last decade or more. And when you go out to a restaurant, you see a child with headphones on staring into a screen, you may look at that kid and judge that family and say, wow, look at what you're doing, you're making the kid worse. But in reality, these kids have underlying issues driving a hypersensitivity, issues with speech, issues with sociability. And about half my functional medicine practice is children, depending on the time of the year. And I've got three kids of my own. So I'd like to think I've got a lot of experience when it comes to applying these functional medicine, natural medicine, nutritional therapy strategies to help children become the best versions of themselves. So hopefully one day they can become a teenager who's emotionally regulated and an adult who's able to function in society without the need for psychotic medication, antidepressants, anti-anxiety medications, you name it. So let's dive into some of the things we're seeing clinically and then how we can approach these and fix them in children. So number one thing I would do if you have a child that's suffering, I would take the ATEC score. We'll put a link below. You can take the ATEC quiz. This is a quiz that's gonna rate sociability in different aspects of your child's personality and functioning. And then from zero to 100 plus, you're gonna get a score and that's how you can rate your children. And we've seen kids that are 100 plus in the clinic. These are kids that would be diagnosed as severely autistic or on the severe side of the spectrum. And we've been able to get those kids down into the single digits, therefore no longer meeting that criteria for diagnosis anymore. And it's a beautiful thing to see. But number one issue we're gonna see is mycotoxins. And you have to realize a lot of this can be coming from mom. So mom, meaning you potentially watching this, if you had mold toxin in your body, that's gonna go through the breast milk and that's gonna go through the placenta to the baby. Unfortunately, decades ago, thought, uh, thinking and thought process on placentas, we thought, okay, this is this beautiful encapsulated baby protected from the toxins of this world. And we know that's not true. We know that microplastics, chemicals, including pesticides and mycotoxins all go through the placenta to the baby. What does that do? Well, we know that mycotoxins, not only can they create birth defects in the child itself, but we know that mycotoxins directly impact the hormone system, as well as the brain, as well as the gut. There's many, many other things we could break down. There's a whole constellation of body systems affected, but if we simplify it as gut, brain, immune, that's covering a lot of it. So mom is gonna be the biggest source. Now it could be from the house as well. So we'll put mom, and plus house. So if this child is born into a moldy apartment, a condo, a townhome, even a luxury mansion, I've seen million dollar homes that are moldy as can be, and these children are breathing in those mycotoxins. And think about it, their bodies are so small, right? Imagine you take a glass of water. How many drops of food dye is it gonna take to get that water to turn blue? Boom, 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 maybe a few drops versus an entire swimming pool. How much is it gonna take to turn that thing blue? So the size of the child makes these toxins worse because their bodies are so much smaller, their bucket, so to speak, their toxin bucket fills up much faster. So number two, heavy metals. Now we can measure both of these via urine. In fact, chemicals we can measure via urine as well. So we'll put these in the same category because they're both gonna impact the gut, the brain, as well as development and neurotransmitter function. So when we look at mercury, for example, we're gonna see this a lot in kids. We're gonna see aluminum as well. We're even gonna see strontium and barium and many other metals, but aluminum, mercury, and then I would say lead is also a big one. I'll do a video on lead soon. I've got some lead test swabs that we're gonna use because even modern faucets and new construction homes can have up to 0.25% lead. So when you go to take a sip of your water in the middle of the night from your sink, you could be ingesting lead in that way. So these three heavy metals, we know lower IQ. There's a ton of published literature on heavy metals and IQ in the offspring. That can also be passed from generation to generation. In this chemical group, this is also gonna include pesticides, okay? So those are things that kill pests, AKA bugs. This is gonna include herbicides. Those are things that kill herbs. So we're talking glyphosate is an herbicide. You have many, many different pesticides. I mean, you have atrazine and many other hormone disrupting chemicals out there that are still on the market. So if you're not eating 100% organic, 
I hope you can work towards that. I remember my great aunt years ago, I offered her some organic strawberries. That's one of the dirty dozen, one of the dirtiest sprayed fruits. We're at my oldest daughter's birthday party. We had some organic strawberries and uh, my great aunt was just joking and she, she goes, they're organic. Do they still taste good? So this idea that organic is some like different thing, it's like, no, these are just the absence of chemicals in this food. And in fact, a lot of times the soil is richer, there's more nutrient density in that. So in fact, to answer her question in a smart way, the answer is, yeah, they taste great and they probably taste better than the conventional, AKA chemical versions you can buy at the supermarket. Number four, infections. Now this seems totally different than these top three, right? When we're talking about toxic children, it's like, okay, how does infection infections equal toxicity. Well, specifically what we found, and this is something that I've talked about with the labs. So some of these labs pay me to actually teach functional medicine practitioners and doctors about this stuff because I run thousands of these a year. And what we found is that Clostridia bacteria, this is a particularly nasty group of bacteria. You may have heard of C. diff before. This is something you've seen in the conventional healthcare world. So uh, nurses, doctors watching this, they will know all about Clostridia, specifically C. diff. In the conventional gastroenterology world, this kills so many people per year and it's becoming a superbug, meaning it's resistant to antibiotics. Luckily with herbs, we've not found that to be the case. However, the connection is this, mold toxicity, a child that's got mold from his mother or is in a home with mold exposure, that weakens the immune system, allowing these Clostridia bacteria to thrive. And we can measure this using stool and urine that's done at home. Now these Clostridia infections, what they do is they mess up an enzyme. For short, we're just gonna call it, uh, so, so the full name is this, it's dopamine beta hydroxylase. So we'll just call it DBH for short, okay? So dopamine beta hydroxylase. What you need to know about this is this, this bacteria produces specific acids, organic acids, that inhibit the dopamine beta hydroxylase, which is normally gonna help you to break down your neurotransmitters in a normal function. However, when you have this gut bug, okay, this is a bacteria happening, screws up the brain chemistry, and we've seen it time and time again. So we can measure clostridia, we can measure the neurotransmitters, and then we can see upstream that there could be a mold issue causing it. Now these kids with clostridia infections, these are the kids that are potentially gonna have ADD, ADHD. These kids could have rage. So any kind of behavioral issues, okay? So this would rage would obviously be more like a mood issue, behavioral issue, ADD, ADHD is gonna be more of like a learning type issue, but anything that's off with the brain, you know, issues with sociability, issues with speech, we can trace that back to gut infections which affect the production of speech and then that's then connected to the toxins upstream. So this is how we approach these things clinically. If you've got children and you need help, I'd love to help you. I just had a new uh, child that we're helping in Panama not Panama City in Florida, but Panama the country. And so it's amazing to see international clients reach out seeking functional medicine strategies. It's a true blessing to be able to help so many people. So this is Evan Brand signing out. I'm board certified in holistic nutrition. I'm also a functional nutritional therapy practitioner. I run the Evan Brand Show. It's a podcast. It's been out for over 12 years now. I've published over 500 episodes, um, webinars, uh, seminars, interactive doctor trainings and many, many things for the general public to learn about. And I've created an online school called Functional Academy of Medicine and Epigenetics where I teach specific protocols, how to fix all this. And then obviously there's one-on-one -on -one consultations available. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you're not subscribed already and you want root cause answers, this might be the channel for you.